Hi, I'm Annika Lidner here with this week's Swedish Startup Sessions and I'm sitting here with Ragnar Lund who is the CEO of Load Impact and we talk in this episode a lot about load testing which you need to do on your site or your system or your app and also about funding and the Swedish startup climate. So, hang on. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas, you ain't hard, you ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas, claim you succeed, please believe. This ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East to Africa. Bet you'll be thanking God. This is Sweden. Stop lying to all, you ain't struggling at all. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas, you ain't hard, you ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas, claim you succeed, please believe. This ain't Sweden Witness a massacre In Middle East to Africa It should be thanking God This is, yep. this is the Swedish Startup Sessions Hi, welcome back to Swedish Startup Sessions I'm here with Ragnar Lön Who is the CEO of Load Impact Really nice to have you We have seen each other in, in to and fro a bit But not really sitting down and, and speaking spoken. So, can you tell me a little about yourself? How, how um, did you come to become a, a startup founder? <laughs> uh, I think I've always been an entrepreneur at heart. My, my whole family has been a family of entrepreneurs. Uh -huh. And my, my parents ran their own company when I was a kid, so it's, become, it's, it's been pretty natural for me to, to be my own employer and mm -hmm. run my own company. And I'm a technical person at, uh, at the bottom. Yeah. Started out in the technical area and I've grown more and more into business and project management and other mm. areas mm. since then, but still very technical. <laughs> I like technical projects. Yeah, and load impact is pretty technical for yeah, being a startup. Yeah, it's very technical and very niched. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, tell me about what is load impact? Load impact is an online performance testing service which means that you can go to our website and you can uh, enter details about your website and then we will uh, simulate lots of users uh, accessing your website at the same time to see how much traffic or how many users your site can handle before it becomes slow. So we basically perform a stress test or, or a performance mm -hmm. test of your website. So if I'm going to get slash dot or... Uh, yeah be the target of a... Yeah, we, we prepare people for slash dot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or simulate slash dotting. Yeah, yeah. So what, what, what kind of... Uh, how, how did you get up with this idea? Well, uh, the company uh, has been actually working in the performance testing area for quite a while. Mm -hmm. We've been going on for about 10 years yeah. as a consulting company. Yeah, yeah. So we've been doing software development within the performance testing and the monitoring and mm -hmm. measurement area. Mm -hmm. So we had a quite a bit of experience in the area. And uh, then in 2008, uh, sorry, let's back up a bit more. 2005, we got a big uh, assignment from the European Space Agency to create a test system for them. So we, we wrote a software to, to um, basically test the, the performance of uh, sat satellite links, internet over satellite links. You know, so we, we really didn't bother so much about the satellite bit. We just uh, created a performance testing system that worked o over arbitrary, yeah. you know, any kind of yeah. internet links, yeah. uh, and they used it to test satellite equipment mm. uh, to see, for example, how, how well email applications worked over satellite links that have very high latencies. And, uh, yeah. so, but we retained the intellectual property rights to the software, and we realized that this system could be uh, extended into an online service for, for example, performance testing. Mm. So in 2008 we uh, found a local investor who gave us a little bit of money and mm. we sat down and we created the first version of, of loadimpact.com. Mm. So, so uh, I mean starting with the European Space Agency isn't bad. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so <laughs> what is, is the, the business model? Because uh, I know you have changed your business model slightly. Yeah. When we started out we launched the service in 2009 and uh, 
I think what we what we made really uh, what we, where we succeeded was that we made the service very user friendly, yeah. very easy to get started with. So we got a lot of users and a lot of attention, uh, and uh, people ran a ton of load tests using our service. But the the functionality was kind of limited. It wasn't very advanced, which means that uh, the really professional uh, testing and Q QA people out mm -hmm. there, quality assurance, mm -hmm. they they. Uh, they probably did not think that our tool was uh, for them mm -hmm. at, that, at that point in time. Um, so, and also we sold the tool uh, on a, per time, mm -hmm. on a time basis. So we sold either day passes or week passes or monthly subscriptions. Mm -hmm. And as it turned out, people were more a little bit, they wanted to run one load test now and they want to pay for that load test mm -hmm. only. And then so, maybe another... Year. Yeah, and, and uh, th there was also other problems with the, the business model we had that we had only this... Um, we had only certain levels you could buy, mm -hmm. uh, so, which meant that we could only serve small customers or fairly small customers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, 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 the most expensive product we sold cost $500 per month. Okay. And that means that a really, really large customer would not pay us more than $500 per month, yeah. even though they could... Uh, probably pay us much more. Mm -hmm. So we had a uh, pricing model that didn't really uh, scale with mm -hmm. the size of the customers. So what we did in uh, last year actually, 2011, was that we changed our pricing model uh, at the same time as we launched uh, a remake of the whole uh, tool. Mm -hmm. So we launched a much more competent version of the tool that uh, even professional testers can use. Uh, uh, with the right functionality for them and we also changed the pricing model and now we sell credits and then people use up credits when they run a load test mm. and a really small test only requires a few credits mm. to run so that would cost you a few dollars mm. while a huge site yeah. uh, will pay us lots of money because they have to run really large tests that mm. require lots of credits to run so we charge based on the size of the test and the length of the test but it's interesting with this you say you, you, you need to find a way to actually get more expensive because I think that in the startup space there's been a lot of talk about free or freemium and yeah. you know keeping prices really low but I run into several startups, now Swedish startups that are, that are in the business to business space and everybody's struggling with with rather raising the prices because they are too low to start with which is yeah. quite interesting and not the reverse. Yeah, I think it's important to find a pricing model that works. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, when we started out, we didn't know exactly who our customers would be. Yeah, yeah. And that's always a problem. So we re released something and we saw that, okay, this is making money, people are interested, but it's not enough for us to live on. No. So we need to change something. Mm. So we decided we should go for a higher segment. Mm. And we don't want to lose the low segment mm. because all these small users, they are very good for us publicity-wise. Yeah. They're a big PR machine. So we are still a freemium service and if you're a small user, you will get a few credits for free mm -hmm. when you sign up. Mm -hmm. And you will get those credits refilled every month okay. automatically. Yeah. So you don't have to pay us anything if mm -hmm. your load testing needs are very limited. Mm -hmm. So we still have a free offer. Uh, and then once you start to, uh, you want to, to run load tests very frequently or you mm -hmm. want to run much larger load tests, yeah. then you have to pay us. And we have uh, found that, that some of the customers who are really big, they, they of course have big testing budgets and they, they can pay for their load testing. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have a pricing model that is going up linearly with the, uh, the size mm -hmm. of the customer. So what are people usually testing? Is it websites or is it apps? or? It's uh, all sorts of things or? really, but yeah. we see that e-commerce sites are yeah. very big. Mm -hmm. Of course, because they have a lot of money to yeah. lose if their site goes down or yeah. if it's slow. Uh, also, um, uh, uh, corporate sites are quite common. Uh, campaign sites and yeah, event I can imagine, sites, I can imagine. Uh, especially. Yeah, it's very common that uh, a large advertising agency or web agency get uh, an assignment to build a campaign site mm -hmm. for a product for some big company, and they need to load test it because they're doing TV commercials or something. Mm -hmm. and they expect to get a huge amount of visitors uh, at some certain point in mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. 
so that's big. Um, there's one category I'm, I'm uh, forgetting here. Uh, maybe we'll come back to me. Yeah. But e-commerce is very big. Yeah. So what's disruptive with with uh, your your startup and your business um, model? Load testing has traditionally been very difficult and very expensive. Mm -hmm. Very few people have known how to properly load test things. It's been a specialist area, mm -hmm. and uh, there's been uh, the, the products that you do you, that you use for load testing has been specialist products. Uh, they have been software products. Uh, for the, the dominant one is actually a product called Load Runner that is today sold by HP, mm -hmm. uh, which of course is a huge company. <laughs> And uh, that product, the giants. yeah, that product is really, really expensive. Mm. It's it's on a completely different level compared yeah. to us. Yeah. Uh, it's a very, very competent product. They've spent many, 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 many years developing that product. So they have functionality that we really can't compete with yeah. uh, yet. <laughs> uh, but um, it is a software product. Yeah. So it's a software license-based product that you you buy a license mm. and you pay. Uh, give them your firstborn <laughs> because it's really really expensive yeah. uh, and then you install that software on some computers that you have to own mm. and operate so you have to have computers enough to generate all the traffic, traffic yeah. you need yeah. to to simulate during your load test yeah. and that can be quite a few machines if yeah. you have a large site you, you also need quite a large uh, infrastructure yeah. of load testing or load generators mm. to generate mm the kind of traffic that will stress your mm -hmm. site. Mm -hmm. So you will have a bunch of machines maybe that will not be used for most uh, most of the time mm -hmm. because you only run, let's say you only run one load test per quarter, mm -hmm. you know, a few, four or five yeah. load tests per year, yeah. big ones. That means your machines will be uh, just idle or mm -hmm. doing nothing or switched off 95% mm -hmm. of the time. It's not It's not a very good investment. No, 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 no. So, so um, what we do with online load testing is we provide infrastructure and the software. Yeah. So you only have to rent things from us when you need them. And even a technical idiot like me can... Yeah, and yeah, we also make it a little bit simpler. Yeah. We like to, to think we make it simpler also. <laughs> <laughs> I think we do quite a good job there. Well, I, but, I've seen your <laughs> site and it's, it's not very complicated. No, so I think it's quite easy to get yeah. started. But then to actually get something out of your load testing, you, yeah, have, that's to, another matter. you have to really dig into it yeah. a little bit more. But um, we provide the infrastructure uh, as a service, mm. the whole, the whole uh, solution as mm. a service. So it means that you can run a really large load test and you don't have to buy and maintain any kind of infrastructure mm. and you don't have to buy and renew license, software licenses mm. or similar. So it's very cost efficient. Yeah. Uh, unless you're a really large corporation that run tons of load tests every day, yeah. it would be much cheaper and easier to, to buy an yeah. online load testing service than mm. to buy your own software yeah. and install it. And, and it can't be many of those. I mean, I think of Amazon and no, a few it's, it's, other. No, they're quite few. Yeah. So, so I think there's a big uh, migration going on, actually, where uh, traditional load testing is giving way, or part of the market is, is migrating towards online load mm. testing. And I would say that, that Load Impact is one of these quiet uh, Swedish startups that are really international. Am I right? Yeah, we, we were completely global from yeah. the start. And we have... Uh, over 30,000 customers now from over 190 different countries. Wow. So we basically have the whole globe covered. Yeah. But um, I mean, we are um, we're still a very niched product. Yeah. So we're still quite small. Mm. Uh, but it, it's great that to live in a time and age where you can actually be as small as we are and still be a global company. Yeah. It's quite cool. So how, yeah. how many are you working with Load Impact? Uh, we're ten people. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, <laughs> for a, for a global uh, corporation, it's quite small. You have to cite, uh, write international or multinational yeah. after your name. Yeah, we're, we're trying to appear like we're American because uh, uh, the U.S. is our biggest market, mm -hmm. and uh, we think that by appearing American, uh, we will uh, appeal more to conservative customers in the U.S. But in the long term, we might have to do more than just appear to yeah. be American yeah. to actually succeed in the US. Yeah. Yeah. Start an American office or Maybe, but it's expensive, but mm. yeah. Mm. So, so um, 
You said you were founded basically in 2008 when you started this company. Uh, so what what stage would you say you are now? You, you clearly passed the, the initial stage. And you yeah. Know, we're generating. Yeah. We, we, I mean, we 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 have revenue. Yeah. Uh, we we're not 100% uh, cash flow positive yeah. yet, but we're getting there. Mm. It's uh, we have a very nice. Uh, development going on right now mm -hmm. and we think that we will be cash flow positive very soon mm -hmm. uh, so yeah that's uh, basically where we're at today one of the big questions for Swedish startups is of course money and funding mm -hmm. and you said that you got initially you know started by a private investor yeah yeah and have you taken further rounds after that yeah, actually, it was a. In two thousand and eight, we got uh, an investment from a small investment uh, company, and then in two thousand uh, last year, early last year, uh, we got two angel investors also come in, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, so and there might be a third one coming in also now. So mm -hmm. we have, we have a few angel investors also. So can you tell us how much you invested in total? In total, uh, I think we're up to a, a few million. Mm -hmm. Crowns or dollars? Crowns. Crowns. <laughs> so not, not dollars yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I find this amazing every day because Swedish companies are, are you know, like you, they are global. And if you were in Silicon Valley, you would probably have like 20 million US yes. in, in funding or something. And it's like good that. that we have lower ex lower costs here yeah. in, in Sweden yeah. than, we, than they have in the US. Yeah. Otherwise, we would, would be toast. So you basically, you're looking for further investments. Uh, we we're thinking about yeah. it. We don't need money mm. right now, but uh, we're actually thinking more uh, of the publicity that mm. Mm. an investment could give us mm. uh, and the, the the credibility in the U.S. Yeah. But that would have to be some well-known American investor, mm. probably. Mm. Otherwise, I don't know if it's worthwhile mm. for us. Well, that's interesting because I feel that to to some extent the. the attitude in Sweden is that you should take in as little money as possible and uh, you should bootstrap and, and keep as much control of the company as possible whereas in the US it's basically uh, the, the idea that take as much money as you can mm -hmm. and, and also you get a lot as you say publicity from, from these VC deals. Yeah, it's hard to say what is the right, mm -hmm. you know, what's the right choice. Mm. I think it, it's good to start uh, on your own and, and keep on that road for as long as you yeah. can without sacrificing opportunities. And yeah. Because you get a much leaner business yeah. and much more streamlined if you if you have if you don't have too much money from the start, mm. then you're forced to really be efficient in yeah. everything you do. And that I think pays off in the end. Yeah. And we've been on that road for quite a while, so I think we are, we have a very nice organization mm. and a very nice product. And how did you come in contact with these with the investors you have? Did they uh, come to you, or did you meet uh, contacts? Through, yeah, personal yeah. contacts. If if uh, if I have to give any advice to yeah. startups today, is to mingle and really be social and mm. meet people all the time because mm. you. Sometimes you th you're thinking like, oh, should I go to this event? I don't know anyone there. Or it's uh, it's not exactly about what we are doing, yeah. so it might not be worthwhile. But in my experience, it's almost always worthwhile. Mm. You almost always meet someone who can help you with something, or you you uh, you bring your message out to someone who tells someone else, and mm. then suddenly they contact you. And yeah, it's it's amazing how much benefit you can get mm. from just a random contact. And I think that, that a lot of Swedish entrepreneurs is pretty lousy at that. Yeah. Uh, we don't see many uh, attending international conferences, uh, startup conferences, for instance, to get that first yeah. chapter. And I think that SoundCloud was one of the few. They, they were at, I think it was Launch or TechCrunch Disrupt a few years ago, which really gave them mm. a splash. Yeah, sometimes it feels like I was just about to say that mm. startups today seem better at socializing because there's lots of this uh, that you're doing, you yeah. know, startup networks and things, yeah. and people meet up and mm. they have Facebook and Twitter and everything. Yeah. But uh, like you say, also that maybe they don't do it internationally. No. 
Okay. They just do it locally. They just uh, socialize with people in, in Stockholm if yeah. they're in Stockholm or uh, whatever. And they don't go out across the. No, I don't think so. I, don't, I think that socializing here is great if you want to meet new employees or co founders or, or uh, local investors, but yeah. not very many of them. So. No. I think to succeed internationally, you have to go outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's interesting that, that Israeli startups are really. Great mm. at doing that. But they have close ties with the US. Yeah, and their their country is so small also, so yeah. they can't really. Um, what what are your your long term goals? Um, you want to be bring bringing more investments. Uh, so what what do you see? What would you want to to take? How far do you want to take Love Impact? We want uh, we have a we have a goal that uh, load impact should be synonymous with load testing. Yeah. So whenever someone mentions load test, you will think load impact. Mm. That's a pretty ambitious goal. Yeah. And uh, internationally, of course, not mm. just here. Mm. Uh, and uh, we want to succeed in the US and in other markets. Mm. And that's, it's pretty tough. I yeah. mean, for, for a local, small company from yeah. Northern Europe. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's basically, I think we want to, uh, we want to uh, get a fairly big share of the, the growing market for online load testing. Mm. That's our goal. And, and what about your competitors? Do you have competitors apart from these customized uh, or, or uh, yeah. software solutions? Yeah. There's, there's the traditional solutions yeah. that I mentioned, software based. And then there's like uh, hybrid solutions where you have, uh, you have fairly large companies that are doing consulting and mm. they also have their own products that yeah. they use to, to, uh, with their consulting mm. uh, services. And um, you might have heard of Keynote. Yeah. Yeah, that's, the, that's a typical company. Mm. And uh, then there's uh, in the online DIY, do it yourself, mm. load testing segment, there's not so many uh, competitors. Mm. We only have a handful of them, but more are popping up yeah. <laughs> as yeah. we speak. But they're like uh, six, seven of them, yeah. and they're all small startups. And um, uh, not to be uh, bragging, but I think we have the best product. Yeah. So, so and perhaps the experience as well. Yeah, we have a, we have a quite a few years yeah. of experience in the in the area, so mm -hmm. that's an advantage mm -hmm. also. And also, I think we have the biggest market share today. Mm -hmm. So, um, what? Which is the most important lesson you would say you have learned during this journey with load impact? Mm. Things take time mm. and uh, socialize. Yeah. That's two lessons. <laughs> and any, any other advice you would, would like to, to give to, to uh, entrepreneurs? Um. No, it would be to, to, to do the socializing yeah. bit, really. Yeah. I mean, make contacts. It's mm -hmm. really, really useful. And spend a lot of time creating contacts yeah. also. I mean, you can go to LinkedIn today mm -hmm. and you can search for, for example, I, I looked at people who used to work for HP yeah. with load running <laughs> uh, until recently. Yeah. You can make that, do, you can do that kind of search yeah. on LinkedIn. So um, find everyone in a high management position who until recently used to work with Loadrunner at HP yeah. and it says yeah. shows me a list of those yeah. people on LinkedIn and then I just contact them mm. because I want their advice or whatever yeah. and it's it's a really good tool. Mm. So LinkedIn. Yeah LinkedIn is a good tool. And and what what would you say that uh, big companies can learn from from your journey? Because I mean you're trying to outcompete HP now. Yeah. I think HP is kind of screwed <laughs> <laughs> because uh, they have their product is terribly expensive mm. and they have this huge organization set up yeah. that costs a ton of money yeah. so they can't really change the pricing they can't mm. launch a competing service because they would undermine their own yeah. very profitable yeah. load testing yeah. uh, business so I think well I guess if someone is really brave there. Mm -hmm. They might do it anyway yeah. and undermine part of their uh, existing, existing yeah. business. And that will of course be, we, be the way for them to survive mm -hmm. in the long run, mm -hmm. but I don't think they will do it. Mm -hmm. It's very, very 
they if can, it can they do it with their current product in the back end, or do, you, do they have to? Oh develop no, they have to develop new? something new. Yeah. Also, Load Runner is, is an old uh, architecture that mm. doesn't translate to into an online service mm. easily. So, do you think this is a general trend when it comes to big companies that they have older solutions and are very hard? Yeah, I think I think that's always been a trend. Yeah. But I think maybe uh, the the speed with which solutions get mm. outdated mm. has accelerated. So it's uh, becoming more and more obvious. Mm. So how how do you see see that that starting a um, startup in Sweden uh, are compared to choosing some other place in the world? I don't know really. I haven't started <laughs> a company some anywhere else. Yeah. But, um, I like Sweden because uh, you, there's competent people here, um, and uh, I think the, the 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 climate is quite entrepreneur friendly mm. in general. The, the drawback is that it's so small and isolated mm. uh, from the rest of the world. So, yeah, both good and bad sides. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for this little chat. Thank you. And good luck Always in fun. the future. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.